If you have anything that is done procedurally in your game, you probably want that to be able to be reproducible. Because if it's entirely only random, you as a developer now lack control over what the output of your game is. So you're going to want to implement some sort of seed system. The ability to put in a number and always have the same random results returned to you. Like this asset over here. It has a number of components that are getting turned on and off and changed depending on the initial seed. So I have the initial seed here, 34211. And if I randomize the meshes with this button over here, things change a little bit. Sometimes some of the meshes will appear, sometimes they will disappear. And you will see every single time the initial seed changes. We can see over here, we have two chains enabled, the bars enabled, and the light is blue. If I go over to this one, which has a different seed, and I put in that seed value, and I set seed, it becomes the exact same as it was over there. Now, this is a little involved for what we're going to be talking about today, but this is one of the many implementations that you can do. Instead, what we will do is something much simpler, and we'll only recreate the colored light from the seed. Everything else works in more or less the same way. So let's start by making ourselves a new blueprint class that will be based on actor and we'll call that BP random light. To that blueprint we're going to add a spotlight because of course we are creating a light here and we'll by default point that down I think make it reach up a little bit higher and just put the light in whatever way you want we're going to uh, have it like this then in the construction script what we'll do is we will take our light which uh, let's give that a proper name just light and we will try to set the color for the light now that gets us a light color structure, but we can actually split that up into a red, a green, a blue, and an alpha. Well, the alpha is always going to be one, but the red, green, and blue can be a random float between zero and one. So let's do that. Random float in range between zero and one. And that is a pretty decent start because now if we put this thing in the world, we will always get a random color. Let's turn off the directional light and the moment we move this you can see it becomes a different color it's very faint sometimes we'll fix that in a moment but we can't reproduce the same color because we're not using a seed well that's because this is not actually what you want to do i'm sorry if you copied that what we're going to do instead is we're going to make a variable and we'll call that a uh, seed and that variable will be of type random stream and when we get a random stream, we can actually get a random float in range from stream. And that's the exact same thing that we did just a moment ago. But instead of just being entirely random, it's just calculating it based on the seed input. And we'll look at the seed input in a moment. But now if we put in uh, random floats based on this stream input and we make a vector out of that and the reason we're doing that is this is just generating the color but if all of these turn out to be like the 0.1 the intensity of your light is going to be lower as well so if we combine those into a vector again and then we normalize that vector it will always have a total added up of one so all these three together will always add up to one and then we split the structure pin again, the X will go into the R, the Y into the G, and the Z into the B. And now we have a random color that's based on a seed. So if we make that seed variable public and we compile, first and foremost, it's always going to have the same intensity. And if we just increase that intensity a little bit so that we can see what we're doing, changing the initial seed will randomly change the color so let's say we want to have a funny number 420 right that's this color now if we put in another random light here and we increase the intensity on that light as well and we put in the number 420 it will result in the same color a little less intense because the intensity for that light is a little lower but the color itself is the exact same now, if you want a button to generate a random seed, the way we are going to do that is we're going to make a function and we're going to call that generate random seed. 
And instead of making a button through C++, which is complicated as all hell, it's entirely unnecessary, we're just going to make a variable here and we'll call that generate new C. And we'll make that a bool. In this function, what we will do is we will check if generate seed is set to true, because if it is, that means we just press that button, and then we will get our random stream, and we'll set the random stream seed. Now, that will be a integer, and we'll simply set that to an actually fully random integer. And when generating a random integer, you can give a max. So if you only want to ever have 10 options in your random seed system, you can put in 10 here. So for ease of use, what we're going to do is we're just going to put in like uh, a million. That will give us a million different options. That's probably fine, right? After that, we'll set the generate new seed bool back to being false. So what it will do is every time in the construction script, when this runs, which we'll add in a moment, when we've just pressed the new seed button, it will generate a new seed and then disable itself so it doesn't regenerate it again the next time. So from here, we can simply add a generate random seed, which again, I misspelled. And as long as that is also a public. And now if we press this generate new seed button, it will just act like a button that picks a random color for us. And it's as easy as that to make a system that's based on a seed. And now, again, if I copy this seed over to this other light, you will see it has the exact same color. Now, anything that you do based on a random integer, a random bool, a random whatever, you can do a random from stream as well. And at that point, it is now based on a seed and as such reproducible if you would need it to be reproduced for any reason whatsoever. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thanks to my Cave Digger tier Patreons, Sergey Thomas, 